Now, we've all got biases, and I'm going to show mine right from the start before we discuss this, Blake. I like Lou Vincent a lot, and this week he has come out and he has fired one of the biggest shots that anybody's probably ever fired at a New Zealand cricket selector. He's really had a big whack at Glenn Turner. I did have the dream of playing for New Zealand again, but nobody showed any interest. It's pretty disappointing, really. I was lining up for lunch and Glenn Turner was in the queue. I tried to initiate a conversation with him. Everyone was coming up and congratulating me, and all he could manage was a quiet dig about me getting tired. That summed up New Zealand cricket for me. You bust your balls and you're enjoying a proud moment, and the national selector can't even manage a well battered. <laughs> Yeah, I feel sorry for the guy. Um, you know, you need support, and when, you, when you're doing well, you need people to come up and congratulate you. When you're not doing so well, then people are happy to get have a dig. So, yeah, look, I'm, I'm not sure I would say those things publicly, but he obviously... He was on his here. way. He's gone to England. He's not yeah. going to play here again. It was the last the hurrah. Point, Murray? Did you want him to say that, uh, Mark? Well, one, knowing Glenn Turner, he, he was a funny chap, actually, but if you want Glenn Turner to come up and say, well, battered, mate, it was fantastic. You, Nobody you, ever said that to him either, he's, you see. He's never, he's never, no, that's not Turner's way. No. And that, when, when Turner's sort of saying like that, I think that's a way of almost breaking the ice, and maybe, maybe uh, Louis uh, read it the wrong way. It's a shame, though, we've lost Louis. And, and one thing I want to say, pe people say, oh, he's had enough chances. People change. People mature. And it looks like Louis might probably have uh, a handle on his life right now. And it's a real shame to lose him in New Zealand career because he's a Not enough guy. of a handle on it not to give that outburst in there. I mean, I, I can under... But the guy's just won a thing. He scored 100. How much does... How many people does he need patting mm. him on the back? You can see, obviously, he was desperate to get into that... Back into the New Zealand fold, and fair enough. But... <laughs> starting slacking the selectors it's maybe no indicates he, why he, you weren't going to get back in the first He seems to be a gut sort of guy that needs that stuff, is that yeah. right? Because every individual is different. Some don't need it, others need patting on the back all the time, and he seems to be perhaps one that does. And yeah, that may I mean, be an example of that. Yeah, he, he's different. Maybe he, he feels aggrieved the way things panned out before, uh, before this point in time now, and he just wanted to have a parting shot. I, I actually look at I, I take what Louis said with a grain of salt. You know? There's a, there's Knowing a generation Louis, I think gap here, though, too, isn't there? You're quite right. Glenn Turner never wanted to be, you think, when he made 100. He scored 100 hundreds. Uh, you know, when you look at the terrific record he had, he was ne never expected to be praised. Lou goes looking for it. And he does. But I just think it's a generation thing. I think a lot of them need to be handled in a different way. Because Glenn had his, guys, has the Glenn problem had is, his though, day, Lee, is the point. The, I raise this as a talkback topic, and it took yeah. off. Has he had his day as a selector? I, uh, pro probably he's reaching towards the end of that tenure, and they want to freshen things up. Uh, I don't think the problem is the selectors. I don't think it's the problems with the coach. I think it's the, for the whole structure. Well, you know, we'll come to New Zealand cricket the whole way down the line. But I need to ask you this: He's going to make the decision which the board will be in de will decide on later, and that is the board will probably ratify the selectors' decision, and Glenn will be one of them. Will and it's one of your favourites. Will it be Taylor or McCullum? Now, there's no way in the wide world will Glenn Turner ever vote for McCullum no. because they are poles apart as personalities. It'll be Taylor. It'll be Taylor. But the more I think about it, the more I hear, the softer I get on, on that to think it'll be Taylor hands down. I think McCullum probably has a better chance than a lot of people think. But the safe option's Taylor, and I think Taylor will do a good job as well. Yeah, You're I, hot I, on McCullum, aren't you? I heard oh, you no, the no, other day. I, I think he's one of the most magnificent, um, talented cricketers that, you, that I've ever seen. You, but you but don't I, think... I don't think that he, at the moment, he's captain material. Okay. I think that he's too about himself. There's certain acts that he's committed on the cricket field that I look at that I find unwholesome and unsavoury and that's the way I call it. As far as his talent goes, he's brilliant. Right. And, and if he could channel, you know, some rein in some of that and think more about the wider picture, he might make a great captain, but I think he's a long way away from that. The main point for me is people have their opinion in terms of who should be captain, but it's the players that know. We as a public don't see exactly how Taylor and McCullum manage the players, and it's the respect and their position within their peer group that for me is one of the major points of selection. Mm. And I, I guess only you could answer that. When, if when you I were asking at the players in the team at the moment who they yeah. would prefer as captain, who would they say? Well, I... Or don't I, they I don't talk actually to you know. I, no, they don't talk to me any longer. <laughs> so okay. I don't know. But this is the, um, the reason why the, my rationale between why making McCullum captain could be good. I look at if you make McCullum captain, I think his desire to perform and, and the pressure he would feel to perform in New Zealand might go up. We might get more consistency out of him. Is that the right reason to make a guy captain? It's That's probably not, issue. is it? That's yeah. an issue. Yeah. 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 Just finally, though, the, with those cricket, would you, seeing what we've seen over the last five, ten years from New Zealand cricketers, would you entrust them? Have they got the maturity? to select a captain. Well, I think you know the answer to that.
No, I'd, we're, I'd probably we're both prefer, know the answer yeah, to that. Yeah, we, we all know the answer to that. And, and, and Glenn Turner suddenly getting a big vote from us. <laughs> <laughs> hey, while we're talking about good people, and I think Lou Vincent's has got some lovely sides to him, so but one I. of my favourite athletes has to be Kim Clijsters. And I want the three of you, in case you've missed it, to see this interview that she conducted straight off at, at, at Melbourne. It is an absolute ripper. Here it is. Yeah. By, the way. By the way, Renee Stubbs told me, she so, showed me a, a text message that you wrote to her about me in Sydney. What, what did I say? You thought I was pregnant? Oh, she did not. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess we've got to ask, are you? No, I'm not. <laughs> let, me, let, let me say what was written in the message. First of all, it said she looks really grumpy and her boobs are bigger. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Is that your favourite interview for the summer? She is a gorgeous girl. She's obviously yeah. spent a lot of time in Adelaide because of her ex-fiance, Leighton Hewitt, be from Adelaide as well. And she was always known and, and everyone talked to her and everyone knew she had a really good sense of person, a, a sense of humour and a great personality and a very easygoing girl with a heap of talent. It, that's hilarious. So what we're talking about if we look at, person, at personalities and what we want from them, just for people to be themselves, and I think she is herself. I don't think she plays any role, and that was a totally natural, normal thing to do. She was, uh, you can't not warm to someone who's no, exactly. like that, who's self-effacing, yeah. yeah. great sense of humour, didn't take any umbrage at it at all, and it just shows you that even the loveliest of women do stupid things. I mean, who the hell would How much are we to blame the Murray? How much are we to blame the media that these people feel that if they let their guard down, we might take something, twist it around, and, and they expose themselves. So they become guarded, they get told how to deal with the media, uh, and, they, and we don't see who they are. Well, Wozniacki came out with a story that she'd made up, that a kangaroo had bit her on the leg. <laughs> now, that is what you're on about, because we're expecting highlights all the time in the media. You know, what's the news? You and I know, as hosts of radio programmes, you go in there and they say, who you got? And you can tell them you're going to have a terrific interview, but they say, well, there's no news in that. Yeah. But you're actually going to find out something about a sport. But news, those news clips that the people put on, man. I, to, to highlight that, I, I interviewed Jock Hobbs uh, last September when they opened that new stand. Right. And it was a very moving interview for me. There's a man there who's, you know, hard as nails and all black, leader of men, leader of the, of the rugby union, and he's fighting leukaemia, he's fighting this big battle. Wow. I get back to work, oh, he mentioned something about the game in Hong Kong might not go ahead, and I just yeah, sat there and yeah, threw my hands yeah, up and thinking, yeah, yeah. that's the only thing they can take out of it, yeah. out of one of the most moving interviews I've ever yeah, had. Yeah, yes. yeah. And you're right. So don't, bother explaining that. That. don't bother explaining that to them, yeah. because they won't see what you're on about. What about press conferences? Do you go to those? If I can avoid them. What do you, well, what do you make of them? Are they worthwhile? And Kathy, no, you've conducted some. I, I just think most of the time, you just get cliched rubbish. Mm. You know what's going to come out of their mouths right. before... Anyone else? So that's not telling the public anything, is it's it? It's not, no. Personality, I think, comes with experience. When you're young, you're too afraid to say anything and you're told, you know, be careful what you say because they could take it out of context. And until you've been in the game like Kim Kleister's, that's when you actually can start being yourself a little bit more. So it's the youngsters that are really reserved because they're too frightened to say anything just in case something negative happens. Well, let us show you a press conference where something unusual happened. A 17-year-old turned up to Michael Clark's press conference. Clark, of course, was captain. He was under, under a lot of stress, and here's what happened. I've noticed something with your batting. You're pushing at the ball too much. What are you going to do about that? I'm pushing at the ball too much. Yeah, playing in front of your body in that. You should be a batting coach. Thank you. What do you think I should do about it? Well, play the ball under your nose and... Under your island, not reaching for it too much. Okay. So that's how you're going to get out. Okay, I'll try that today in the nets. Thank you. <laughs> I thought, I, somebody said to me, Clark showed no personality in answering that. I thought he showed respect for the kid who was asking the question. Yeah, but you, you could tell the look, he didn't appreciate it. The kid was right on the money, too. He, uh, he, he had been pushing out the ball, and I think his right. next two dismissals, he was pushed at the ball again and got out. So I don't, how, the, how the, the kid got in there in the first place, I don't know. Security might be the ones to blame well, here. Do you, but, you know. do you know where I'm taking this then? Because that, for me, was the press conference of the year, and the question was asked by somebody who wasn't in the media. It I can remember the actually... time I'd heard a decent question in a press conference. I, I can remember um, doing a press conference with Stephen Fleming 
and uh, it was in the Caribbean in the World Cup 2007. It was myself there, and there was a bunch of Indian media, actually. It was, uh, and uh, I asked Stephen Fleming uh, if he was going to put away that stupid uppercut hook that kept getting him out. And the Indian fellas around me just nearly fell off their seats. Who, who was this person paying a, such a lack of respect to the New Zealand captain that he was asking the question of that nature? It's, it's, it's a fear also of asking a lot of the talent, uh, the players, the sports people, any form of hard question in case they try to shame you in front of your peers. Your advice as somebody in the media to sports people then, what would you suggest that they go about showing themselves off in public or how should they present I, themselves? I think you should just be yourself. Be aware the whole time, but be yourself. If you're an absolute beep beep, then you're an absolute beep beep and that's the way it is. And if you're a lovely Kim Kleisters, you're Kim Kleisters. Well, you know, it's interesting. Michael Clark, generally he's seen as, as very arrogant, but because he hadn't been playing so well, I think we saw more of Michael Clark over the past month than we have in the past five years because he was becoming a bit more humble and he realised he was under the pump. And I think that reaction would have been different if he was in fact scoring run after run and someone was criticising him. Um, so, would you he know, have criticised him? Well, no, he wouldn't have, but you know, you, I'm still just trying to put it in You're context. Just, and why, why, why was he so bowed and broken? Nothing to do with England spanking their yeah, backs. Well, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm surprised it's taken... <laughs> I'm surprised <laughs> 40 minutes in it's taken you miles. Goodness but we are going to look at the Ashes in the third section, and we're also going to look at the Black Caps. But